I've had the 16 inch MacBook Pro for a little over a month now. Let's hop into this review so I can share with you my thoughts on this thing. The keyboard is a refreshing step backwards into a better and more robust feeling uh, typing experience in my opinion. I didn't hate the old one until I typed on this scissor switch based design. It is way more comfortable for typing for long periods of time due to its mechanics and its design. Additionally, I enjoy the quietness of this keyboard in comparison to the older one. It is much less clicky and annoying to others around you. The trackpad is still great, however, I wish it was a bit smaller. I find myself inadvertently moving things around with the cursor when I'm typing. Palm rejection has been improved, but it's still not great and I find myself zooming in and out and placing the cursor in weird spots during email a lot which is really annoying and a drag on my productivity. The built-in microphone is pretty fantastic and is totally something you could use in an online delivery format like a podcast or a streaming setting. It's quite the feature add and I'm happy they included the Apple dubbed studio quality three microphone array that has high signal to noise and directional beamforming capabilities. Now, is the microphone something I would use in a professional environment regularly? No, but we have all forgotten gear during travel and this mic gets the job done in a pinch because it's always available if you need it because you don't forget your editing system. Uh, that's something I've never forgotten, but I have forgotten microphones, batteries, cables, whatever it is. Uh, this microphone will get the job done. Say you went to CES or NAB and you forgot your microphone. Uh, you could record voiceover on this thing and be pretty happy with it and deliver it to your audience with minimal to absolute, probably no noticeable difference to them. Instead of talking about how awesome the audio quality is on the 16 inch MacBook Pro, I thought I'd take this opportunity to demonstrate to you or give you a sample of the sound that can be recorded using the three system microphone array that's built into the 16 inch MacBook Pro. In my opinion, this is some of the best audio quality that can be recorded directly to your laptop without any external recorder or microphone. Uh, it records in a left and right channel so you can have stereo sound being recorded into the system and kind of manipulate it in any way, shape or form that is conducive to your workflow. It, it works really great in a pinch. So if I forgot my microphone, I can go to a quiet room and record sound into this and process it like it is being processed here in this video. Now, with that said, is this something that I would use on the regular? No, like I just wouldn't because I have higher quality microphones and recording systems available to me. But if you're starting out in, in content creation or doing some voiceover or doing tutorials or whatever, the microphone on this laptop is really, really good. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below uh, of the sound quality that is being recorded and what it sounds to you or what, how it sounds to you on your end considering YouTube's compression. Along the lines of audio, the speakers, they're pretty phenomenal and the engineering that has gone into the force canceling subwoofer is nothing short of amazing. It literally uses sound waveforms to produce in phase sounds while mechanically moving them in the opposite direction to cancel out any vibrations. Apple includes a high fidelity six speaker system within the 16 inch MacBook Pro and it really is the best sounding laptop on the market. Thing is, did this new revision of the MacBook Pro really need a speaker improvement? Personally, I don't think so. The 15 inch MacBook Pro already has some really good speakers and I would have loved to have had Apple use the additional chassis space in uh, some better fashion like reintroducing an SD card slot or adding additional I.O. That would have been better for me. I don't know. Uh, is that something you agree with? Feel free to leave me a comment down below. There's a lot of room in that chassis now and they took a lot of it up by introducing those speaker uh, revisions. Uh, why not just keep the old speakers and give us back some SD card slots. Now onto performance of the 16 inch MacBook Pro. This thing runs quieter, cooler, and longer due to the larger chassis, uh, the redesign and thermal processing and hardware, and the increased battery size. The 16 inch MacBook Pro is wider, thicker, and longer than the 15 inch version of this thing, or the previous version. The 99.8 watt hour battery included can get me through a rough cut, color and initial render of a 10 minute video project roughly with no problems. Before I'd have to skip 
on the render and wait until I plugged the machine in. Additionally, the one thing I really welcomed was the fix of the inability of the previous power adapter not being able to charge the 15 inch while it was under load. There was always a decrease in battery life when I was connected to the wall charger during renders or live streaming or anything like that where it was CPU intensive. That was because the machine itself was drawing more power than what the wall charger could deliver to the battery while those things were happening. That no longer happens as the 96 watt uh, power adapter that is included now provides sufficient amount of power without any compromises. It is really refreshing that Apple is putting form over function and giving users what they need and have requested, especially in a world of improved battery life and sustained performance due to improvements made to the thermals to better cool the machine under load and the power to do it. Let's compare this MacBook Pro to my beloved iMac Pro behind me in performance. All right, so before we get into comparing these two machines, I wanna talk a little bit about the specifications between the two. Looking at this graph, you will see that there are a lot of similarities. The difference being that one is a Xenon processor, which is eight core, and the Intel Core i9-9880H is also uh, an octa-core uh, variant that clocks in at 2.3 gigahertz at the base clock speed. The iMac Pro is in it clocks in at 3.2 gigahertz at the base clock speed. The GPUs are also very similar but different. They're AMD Radeon Pro GPUs, one being a Vega 56 with 8 gigabytes of VRAM and the other being a 5500M with 8 gigabytes of VRAM. The two systems differ in RAM. On the iMac Pro, it comes at a base uh, 32 gigabytes of 2660 megahertz of DDR4, which is ECC or error correcting RAM. You won't get that on the MacBook Pro. The clock speed is the same, but it's not error correcting. Storage is the same and the prices are very different. Now the price here on this graphic is a little bit off for the MacBook Pro. I spent a hundred extra dollars for the eight gigabyte variant of VRAM on the GPU. And if you do video or graphics or anything like that, I highly recommend that you opt for that and maybe even consider going up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. So we can know the differences between the two machines. I hope to kind of highlight some synthetic benchmarks which are common to most people. First and foremost, most is Geekbench 5. The iMac Pro scores a pretty respectable 1088 on the single core, but the MacBook Pro by scoring 1140. Multi-core score, there's really no comparison because there's a lot of headroom and the clock speed is much higher on the iMac Pro and that scores an 82.88 and on the 16 inch MacBook Pro it's 68.85. And I also did a compute uh, benchmark and the iMac Pro scored a really respectable 45.204 while the MacBook Pro at a 25.875. Moving right along with uh, Cinebench R20 or Revision 20, the iMac Pro scored a 3,772, while the 16-inch MacBook Pro kept up really nicely by scoring a 3,511. Here's where it got interesting. I tested both of these machines using the Heaven benchmark. I tested the display uh, resolution, so I did default on all of it, and you can see that the 16-inch MacBook Pro blew the iMac Pro out of the water, but you can see the resolution was very different. Uh, on the iMac Pro, you had a 3200 by 1800 resolution on ultra settings, and that score came out at a 967. The average frames per second on that was a 38.4, while the MacBook Pro at that lower resolution scored a 1434 and had uh, an average frames per second at 56.9. One thing to note with this is that I dropped the tested display re resolution on the iMac Pro to 2560 by 1440 and the score on that was a 1533 with an average frames per second at 60.9 so if you were testing each one of these machines uh, on similar displays or display resolutions you would uh, definitely score higher on the iMac Pro. I thought it would be interesting to test the read and write speeds of the internal SSDs on each one of these systems. They're really close on both sides. Uh, the iMac Pro takes the cake in the write department uh, 
but the 16 inch MacBook Pro has a significant uh, lead over the iMac Pro in the read. Let's talk about some media testing. Now, I'm not the most savvy Final Cut Pro 10 user, so every time I export something, I throw it over to uh, Apple's compressor. And in this graphic, you're gonna see that I utilized a nine minute and 17 second Final Cut Pro 10 project. That project had color correction, stabilized footage, motion graphics, and transition within it. I utilized compressors default 4k YouTube preset and ran that batch. The iMac Pro did a pretty good job at compressing that file and giving me a final delivery file in 10 minutes and 43 seconds. The MacBook Pro took a little bit longer and did it in 11 minutes and 14 seconds. So the MacBook Pro is really keeping up with this desktop class machine Granted, it is the base model of that desktop class machine. I was really, really impressed by the export times that this produced. Moving right along into Premiere and rendering a sequence. The sequence was 11 minutes and 24 seconds long. It had Lumetri color uh, applied to some clips, adjustment layers, warp stabilizer applied to some clips. It has some After Effects direct linking uh, motion graphics in there, as well as some transitions from other Premore Pro projects and all types of stuff. So there was a lot in this 11 minute and 24 uh, second sequence. Everything is rendering through Metal, which is has been really in, uh, improved by Adobe on Mac OS. And you can see that there is quite a significant span or difference between these two machines in renders. I think it did a pretty respectable thing on the MacBook Pro considering it was a little bit faster than a one-to-one -one ratio. And when I say one-to-one, -one, for every one minute there is in the sequence, it takes one minute to render. So it's a little bit faster than what the entire sequence was. So I grabbed that 11 minute and 24 second sequence and queued it over to Adobe Media Encoder and utilized the default uh, AME YouTube 4K preview set that is at 40 megabits per second. Uh, one thing to note between these two times is that both of the CPUs and GPUs on both of the machines weren't even pushing uh, at max at all. The GPU on the iMac Pro was around 9 to 12% usage uh, and the, the MacBook Pro was a little bit higher uh, fluctuating between like 15 and 20 percent of usage on the GPU. So there's only room to grow on both of these systems. You can see they're really close in both. They exported uh, that project in roughly the same time. I mean, it, the difference here is negligible. That's all there is with these uh, real world comparisons that I did between the two machines. Let me know what you think uh, with a comment down below. In my opinion, this laptop is the strongest candidate for full desktop replacement. And for those of you that run hybrid setups where you dock your laptop when you're home and take it out on the go, the 16 inch MacBook Pro is the perfect machine for that. The six and eight core i7 and i9 CPUs and the AMD Radeon Pro 5000M series of GPUs really give users a ton of headroom in the performance arena. It is absolutely a beast of a laptop. I would say that I really have enjoyed the use of this laptop. It's really, really refreshing. I said that before. My conclusions, I wish Apple gave us a SD card slot instead of redesigning the speakers. Like I said before, the speakers on the 15 inch version were pretty great to start with and uh, were good enough for me and I'd argue that they were good enough for most creators like myself. The bigger chassis in the 16 inch MacBook Pro could have maybe, probably, possibly housed a UHS-2 SD card reader like that on the iMac Pro at a minimum. That would have been really great. If nothing else, an SD card reader would have been the perfect resurrection of the old uh, I.O. for the MacBook Pro as they went back or kind of stepped back and provided us a keyboard that was based on the older design. Additionally, I don't know why such a terrible FaceTime camera was used in this machine. It's a 720p potato that really has me confused as to why Apple would have 
uh, would provide us with such an amazing microphone array and speakers, yet shaft us with a really low quality FaceTime camera. It would have been nice if they included the same camera that can be found on the iMac Pro. You'll find myself comparing that machine to this machine because it is a really good uh, hybrid setup replacement if you don't want to have a desktop at home. So here we are recording directly on this crappy, absolutely terrible 720p FaceTime camera that is built in to this $2,000 plus laptop. You can see all of this grain because I'm in kind of a low light setting or what you would consider a low light setting, but it's, I mean, I'm using some studio lights, but you can see all this grain because it's absolutely terribly compressed. It's a shame because the sound that is being recorded doesn't match the video quality that you can expect from this laptop, which is next to nothing. Now I'm gonna compare this to the iMac Pro. It's right there behind me. And we'll, I mean, you can see night and day difference. The difference is, is that the microphone on the iMac Pro doesn't sound as good as this does, but the video quality doesn't sound or look as good on that as, I mean, I don't even know what I'm saying right now. You know, you can see all of this green, looks like crap. Terrible decision, Apple. I think you guys could have done a little bit better with this. Let's hop over to the iMac Pro and take a look at that. So here's the iMac Pro in comparison. There is none when it comes to visually comparing the FaceTime cameras. This is absolutely 100% positively better than what you would experience on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. However, the internal microphone on the iMac Pro is not as good and it comes nowhere near close to producing the sound quality that you can expect on that machine back there. This is, there's kind of a meld between the two. I mean, there's some things in the iMac Pro that I wish that the 16 inch MacBook Pro had and there's things in the 16 inch MacBook Pro that I wish the iMac had. This is just for comparison's sake. You can see the visually, this is much, much better than what you would experience on that machine. Ultimately, the pricing is great. And that sounds really weird that uh, on an Apple device feels weird saying that as you get a lot for your money considering the other comparative machines available to you currently. I think the sweet spot is the $2,400 stock model because you get a lot of machine for not a whole lot of money. At the time of this video, there were already Apple authorized resellers offering discounts on the purchase of a brand new 16 inch MacBook Pro. If you wanna take a look at uh, current pricing and availability, including those discounts, uh, feel free to hit the links in the description. Those are my affiliate links, so uh, with full disclosure, if you purchase through those, those help support channel or content creation here on this channel uh, by providing me some sort of a kickback on your purchase without costing you anything in addition. Uh, before I close, I have nothing to disclose. I purchased the 16 inch MacBook Pro with my own money and I am providing this review to you based on my purchase and usage experience in the month's time that I had it. Well, that about does it for me in this one. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. Thank you for taking the time to watch. I am Tomas and I will catch you in the next one.